Hello everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel with Airsoft. In this video, we are going to discuss about DCM overview. DCM is nothing about it is a diagnostic communication manager. In AutoSAR, in the basic software, we have three layers. One is service layer, another one is easy abstraction layer, another one is microcontroller abstraction layer. DCM is the key module in the service layer of the basic software. The main purpose of DCM is to provide standardized support for external diagnostic communication with the ECU, typically over UDS, KWP 2000 or OBD protocols. The main functionality of DCM is it will process a diagnostic service request and it will receive the diagnostic messages from the communication stack and routes them to the correct internal handler. And it also manages diagnostic sessions like default programming or extended diagnostic session. And it will implement unlocking mechanism using seed key exchange for secure services. And it will provide access to internal data through defined DID. And it will create interfaces with the DEM to access or clear fault codes. It will support start or stop of internal routine via UDS. And it will manage as P2 and extended P2 timing for response delays as per UDS. And it will allow reading or writing of flash or EEPROM during diagnostic programming. And it will can enable or disable ECU communication upon tester request. So these all are the key responsibilities of DCM. If you see the interaction of DCM with other modules, DCM will tightly couple with DEM, NVM, BSWM, EM, CSM and COMM and PDR will reroute the message to DCM. The responsibility of COMM is it will manage the diagnostic sessions and communication modes. It's like full COM, no COM, silent COM related. And they especially the responsibility of DEM is DCM will read the reported DTC from a DEM. And DCM will use NVM for store the persistent data. And it will use CSM and KM for security purposes, especially CSM for cryptographic algorithm and KM for, KM for handling certificates. DCM has three submodules one is DSP, another one is DSD, and DSL. And DSL is a lower layer because FDR will reroute the message to DSL, and from there it will go to DST, then from there it will go to DSP. DSP will communicate to software component via RTE. DSL means it is a diagnostic session layer. DSD means it is a diagnostic service dispatcher. DSP means it is a diagnostic service processor. The interaction between DSL, DSD, DSP is DSL is the first module will get hit in the DSM. So from the PDU router, first it will go to the DSL. In DSL, it will transport and it will do the protocol management. That is a responsibility of DSL. So, what is especially DSL will do is it will validate protocol format and it will handle segmentation or reassembly of UDS messages and it will manage a timing P2 or extended P2 for timing for responses and it will convert in incoming PDU into diagnostic request and it will process to DSD. So the DSL will act like a transport manager that prepares the data to be processed at a diagnostic service. DSD. So DSD will act as a router that determines which service the diagnostic request belongs to and which handler should process it. So it will parse the service ID from the request and it will determine if the SID is supported in the current session or security level and it will forward the valid request to DSP. So DST is like a traffic controller or dispatcher. It routes incoming request to the right processing function. DSP, it is a diagnostic service processor. It will really contains the actual logic of handling the specific diagnostic services like read data identifier, read PTC information, read, uh, write by identifier, and it will have a ECU reset, diagnostic session control. It will execute routines. And it will access application level data via RTE or DID. And this is the module will reach to software component via RTE. And this will interact with other modules like DEM, NVM or memory services. 
So DSP in DCM is like a brain. That process, the diagnostic request and prepare the correct response. If you see the real DCM behavior, it will handle the communication between diagnostic or tester tool in the electronic control unit. Because DCM is the only module can communicate to the external tool like KNOE or Canalyzer. That's basically a tester tool. Whenever the diagnostic, when a diagnostic tool requests a service to an ECU, DCM module will validate the service because that's what we have seen for a three suppliers and it will check for applicable sessions and the security access. If the request is valid, then DCM process the service and respond with the positive response and the, with the required data. If the request is invalid, then DCM will respond with a negative response with the respective negative response code. This is the behavior of DCM. This is the general DCM call stack. So the DC it will start from CAN controller and it will reach to software component. CAN controller will be part of M call and it will go to CAN interface. From there it will go to CAN TP and it will go to PDUR. Then it will reach DCM. In DCM we have seen you have a three suppliers. Then from there it will go to RTE. Then finally it will reach the software component. So in software component we will pack the data. Then the same way the data will reroute to via RTE, then it will come to DCM, then PDR, and CAN TP, and CAN interface, and CAN controller. So in CAN interface, we will receive the complete CAN messages. And CAN TP, we will check about the complete frame related. And it will go to the PDR. And PDR, we will have we, have, we will have the configuration for whether it will go to DCM or any other module. And DCM, we will go through the three layers. Then it will go to software component, via RTE. Here I have another example for complete DCM workflow whenever you want to read a win number how the flow it will be. So from the tester it will reach the CAN controller. You can imagine tester is like a KNOE or CANLYZER. So it is sending 22, 22 indicates it's a read data by identifier. F190 is indicates it's a DID. So it will reach the CAN. From there it will go to PDR. And PDR it will go to DCM. In DCM, first it has to go through the internal three layers like DSL, DSD, and DSP. From there, it will go to application software component via RTE. So here we will have the ports connection to reach application software component. There we will pack the win number. So win is nothing about the vehicle identification number. It will last 17 bytes. So that will be copied in the application software component. Then application to it will reach DCM via RTE. Then it will go to PDR. Then finally it will reach CAN. From there it will reach tester. So this is the way the communication will happen whenever there is a diagnostic request come from tester tool. I hope you got an idea how the communication is happening from microcontroller abstraction level layer to application software component and how the same way it will come in reverse too. I hope you like this video. Please share it with your friends. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.